They're coming. The Bolsheviks? Yes. Sound the alarm. Hi guys, this is Fishta. You're watching Fun Carpet. We're here at the gala screening of Bitter Harvest at the Yamaha Hotel in London. So how important is it to tell these stories today, particularly in the present with all the political events that are happening today? Well, I think that this story, the fact that when I heard the Holodomor, I didn't know what it was about and people I spoke to didn't know what it was about, which for something that killed between 2 and 10 million people, for us not to all know about it is completely shocking. And then I learned through reading the script that it was supposed to be that way. It was intentionally kept under wraps until about 1991 when the information started coming out. So I think that it's important that this story comes out and then the Ukraine is still facing problems now and um, so it feels like a, a, a correct time maybe for it to come out. Because um, what happened then is repeating itself now. Um, we enter the world of our lovers, Natasha, played by Samantha Barks, and also um, Max Irons, who plays Yuri, two lovers. And through their world, it might seem distant today because it takes place in 1933, it's so relevant to what's happening today. We have warships outside of uh, America, we have uh, Russian ships buzzing American ships, and the world doesn't know what the sort of imperialistic uh, history uh, Russia has uh, exhibited, especially on Ukraine. They have killed four to 10 million people through forced uh, starvation in order to implement communism. And today they're taking Crimea, they're taking the West, they're, in, they're inside uh, uh, Syria, and it isn't the Russian people, it's the system, and we have to be vigilant. So I'm very fortunate and honored as an independent filmmaker to make a movie that not only entertains, but also educates. And George Mendelok, our director, is so passionate about the Ukrainian history. He is Ukrainian, and you know, it's so it's so um, important to have somebody like him, like leading us, because there isn't a thing he doesn't know about the Ukrainian culture, and it, it's about the Ukrainian people. So it needs to be done um, sensitively. And he, you know, is such a great fountain of knowledge when it when it came to this. He led us in the right direction. The, the really great things to read and so we were completely all you know up to speed and we'd done our homework before we even stepped foot on the set oh, it's an epic but if you dig deeper the commentary of the film is really describing in great detail the tragedy that occurred when Stalin orchestrated a famine genocide killing it's estimated between three and ten million people and that's really the key message that we wanted to get across and the challenge was to create a balance where people would have enough historic knowledge presented to them so they wouldn't be confused and yet to experience the beauty of love and the experiences that a young couple had growing up in a village initially very innocent having fun living a normal life and their life being torn apart by the or by what Stalin did and so our challenge was to not make it overly depressing because it could have been it, it, you know when you're talking about a genocide it's it's very sad and potentially very depressing but by showing very poignantly the capacity for love and for determination and courage we were able to show that no matter how difficult the situation gets you cannot kill the capacity for love and the capacity for helping each other and striving to succeed and to survive and we and we I think we were able to to show a, a little bit of an uplifting positive hope for the future you know researching the man he, he, his backstory was tragic you know he was uh, he witnessed his mother being uh, being executed in the church he was bothered by the priest taken into the Soviet Union and molded into the, the man he was and people say he's a villain I, you know you could you could argue that fact I played a villain better than you know I say better than anyone but I'm the go-to guy to be the villain but this guy is still a soldier and if uh, I said to the director if I could find one second or one moment in this movie where people actually feel sorry for him or, 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 or have a moment where they start thinking about him you know that's what we want to drive you know it's, it's a it's a love story set within a, a historic tragedy which I'm not a fan of but with this movie even the love story represents you know love hope uh, uh, 
humanity, survival, and, and it all kind of blends itself into one with what I'm doing and, and what Max and uh, Samantha's character is doing. And there was a moment, I was lucky enough to shoot it in the Ukraine, uh, there was a moment there when I said to all the Ukrainian cast and crew, uh, you, you must hate me, and they're like, you know what, we're watching your character more than anything because you need to drive the misery, my friend. And it was at that, that moment when I thought, you know what, then I kind of kicked into gear and said, let's, let's do this and give it the best shot I can. It's very excited to be here. Have you heard of this director before? Have you watched any of his work before? Are you really interested in the particular subject that he's bringing to light? I don't think I've seen any of the movies before. You know, I'm not a huge movie buff. Music is my thing, but um, obviously I enjoy movies. I love going to the cinema and seeing the latest uh, latest film. But um, yeah, just, you know, my family are from, just relatives are from Ukraine. So I think it's quite poignant to me to be here to, to watch, us, you know, see the film and... So you resonate. Yeah, exactly. You see the story to do with that. So excited, yes. How important is it to tell stories like this today particularly, but really always, like as an artist, how important are these stories in the big screen? I think it's important as an artist, as a filmmaker or an actor or a writer to be able to the medium to be able to tell the truth, to, to explore actual events, to be able to get what actually happened out there. And we live in a world right now where we're so connected to our iPhones that we, our children and, and our grandchildren, and you know, I know I'm guilty of it too, that I we didn't grow up reading history books as much. It's just what's current and what, what you find online. And something like this that is has been a secret and has not been told been told it's we have now an opportunity through independent filmmakers and through people that are passionate about the storyline to be able to have a film that be able to deliver that message there must have been a certain responsibility of course uh, telling the story in particular how did you feel how was the going into character and what did you love about it I think there is a pressure absolutely to tell this story um, honestly and honor the people who this happened to um, when shooting of course you take it you know you have to take it scene by scene because if you carry the end of the story at the beginning then it's sort of you you can't concentrate but I think of course you wanted to honor the story um, and honor like the, a lot of the things that happened to my character happened to people and we heard from people who go wow that's that was exactly my grandparents story and so there is a lot there is a, a big responsibility that comes with that how important is it to invest and to for artists also to shed light on these particular stories because of course not a lot of people might have heard about this particular sad chapter of history so how important is it for you to really finance this kind of movies more and more in future well it was extremely important that was why I financed this picture because I wanted the world to be presented with the facts in in the West almost no one knows that the whole war happened Stalin covered it up very very well you know in fact even the Ukrainian people for throughout the Soviet Union were not allowed to talk about it under penalty of imprisonment or execution and so it's still an open sore for Ukrainians when they talk about it and it was important for me to show that although it happened in 1933, there are parts of the world that are now beginning to idolize Stalin and what he did. I think that's a very dangerous trend for all of us. In is this why it's important now? A movie like this is important now, particularly. Um, was it kind of time to be released now? Well, our film was started when there were there was these uh, intrigues did not exist. You know, when the we were finished the principal shooting two days before the former president of Ukraine announced that they were not going to the EU but going to Moscow and then everything broke open and we and we were finished essentially so we were it's a historic epic we wanted to portray what has since happened is that there is now a lot of parallels that are happening in the world that people say we can learn from what happened in 1933 because a lot of that is starting to repeat itself and you know the old saying if you don't study history you're bound to repeat its mistakes and so we hope my hope is that when people see this film it will provide the conceptualization for them to to better understand the challenges that Ukraine and the West are facing today the fact that this is a real story that happened to real people so you want to honor that because it's a very sensitive 
story. Um, this uh, this awful, awful tragedy, the Holodomor, killed between two and ten million people, and for that not to be known, by, I didn't know about it, and a lot of people I spoke to didn't know about it, so that was a challenging aspect because, you know, this story deserves to be told, and it needs to be told, and just, you know, honoring, honoring the people it's happened to was the challenging aspect. Many other challenging aspects in terms of, for me as an actress, approaching the character, but um, that was definitely the main one. That's a good question. We shot the movie originally in uh, 35 days, and I had a second unit, but then we realized that the war was breaking out when we were finishing, so we came back, and then we had to decide what the thrust of the story was going to be, whether it was going to be more um, historical or more of a romance, and then we had to find the balance, even though the war was going on, and because we wanted to be so accurate, that's what took the time. Well, I think we as a cast got on really well, so at the end of the day it's quite difficult to leave your work at the door in this way because it's, you know, very emotional scenes and there are real stories from real people. And so it's not easy just to just leave the day behind. But the fact that we all got on so well was so nice. We had very early mornings and for me I was like, you know, you just have to be I had to be you had to be very focused every day because they were big scenes, you know. Did you know any of this part of history before this movie kind of brought some light and shed some light on it? Not particularly, no. I'm just looking forward to kind of getting in there and, and watching the movie and, and learning more about it. And Artemis is a love story and it's a story of fight for survival and fight for your family. So how much do you think of that really resonates with people every day, even in today's life, in the present? Has love changed? <laughs> Has love changed? I think everybody has a feeling of love and they feel like the most important thing what relates to everybody is that the first true love, everybody remembers their first true love and um, and that love story is a thread that, that binds in any relationship or any historical events and I think that in, in all aspects of the world it's universal, love is a universal language and even if you know nothing about the history, even though if you're, you don't necessarily want to know the, the actual events. I think the fact that it's a love story, everybody can relate to it. This was obviously an amazing cast. How was working with everybody? And uh, if you can tell us some fun story about it. Well, everybody was amazing. Um, Max, you know, me and Max had a lot of work at the beginning, um, and for a lot of the film, we're separated. And so, at the end of a day, we'd come, we'd join in, in the makeup trailer, and we'd be like, "What happened in your day?" And we'd be like a married couple, because he'd be like, "This is happened." So now, actually watching the movie, it's so exciting to see all the things that he was doing, you know, and, and, and vice versa, see how it all comes together. First and foremost, our, our, our lead financier, Ian and George Mandela, are from Ukrainian descent. Their families, their forefathers, suffered the Holodomor, which translates into um, uh, death or murder by starvation, and it's kind of the worst way to go. But um, the influences from them were, was great. It was it was strong. You know, we was guided by them, and and their passion for this this project and for this this movie to be out and released and spread out to the world was was so great and so helpful. We couldn't really go wrong because we was lucky enough to shoot on location in in, in Kiev, and we had all of the Ukraine people and all of the directors, uh, you know, the, all of the, the directors and the financier authenticating it and getting it the best they can. I was a producer on the movie as well and it was so difficult with us battling with with George and Ian because they want everything in but we got to kind of condense it into a movie that's watchable not enjoyable but watchable and we need to get the story across four years in the making and I think we're finally there I get on with Tama so well and when I first met Tama he apologized he was like I'm so sorry for the things that are gonna happen in this movie and luckily we get on like a house on fire so there are some really disturbing scenes and moments that me and Tama had to have um, that it's sort of difficult to know how to deal with them and how to prepare for them mentally but it was handled very sensitively and luckily Tama's awesome and we have a great friendship so it was as comfortable as, it, as those scenes could ever be. So what is next for you then? Are you still filming Vikings? Are there new projects? When will we see you next? I'm right now currently shooting season 5 of Vikings the end of it. We're in episode 17 right now and I have 
Dark Towers coming out with Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey. You can see me next uh, in a film called Interlude in Prague that's out later this year where I'm playing an opera singer, so very, very different. I'm just in the studio writing, recording. I've been locked away for the past few months and really busy over Christmas. Uh, I write with my two brothers who are in my band also, so yeah, we're having a great time, kind of just what can we expect? Um, it's kind of a country rock pop sound. So yeah, um, I'm not releasing anything just yet, but hopefully there'll be something out maybe to stream There'll be some music of some sort, maybe a video or something. I don't actually read newspapers or tabloids, so I don't really know too much about it, but I'm sure it's, 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 I'm sure it's a lot of bollocks. He's fine, he's Danny Dyer. You know, everybody loves to hate Danny. Everybody will say a lot of things that are not true about the man. At the end of the day, he, he's in EastEnders, he saved his EastEnders. He's a, he's a family man, he's a father, he's a, he's a good man and, and, a, and a wonderful actor. So, you know, if, there, if, if he does have any problems, which I doubt it, he's probably gone who uh, gone on holiday for a couple of months with exhaustion. <laughs> but, you know, he's entitled to do it. So he's a friend and, and, uh, and whatever it is, uh, you know, I don't believe after press. I think my, my message to people would definitely be, you know, I didn't know about this horrible moment in the Ukrainian history. And so I think come watch the movie because I think you'll feel like me, ashamed that you didn't know about this. And I think it's really important to hear the Ukraine's story and in this way. Thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. There'll be a lot more to come. We will be together again. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.